Hey guys, today we're going to go over proving lines are parallel. So, um, the real way to do this is to do a formal proof like you guys did with the algebra proofs. You know, where there was the statements and the reasons, you had to put it all in order. We're not going to make you do that. Um, we're not quite that evil to you guys that are on on-level pre-AP. absolutely has to do that. But you guys don't have to. Um, but you will have to... Um, justify your answers and to know why you can set these things up that way. So you will have to understand what the different um, postulates and things are so that we can do that. Well, they're actually theorems, um, but you will have to know what they are in order to write how you know you can set the problem up that way. So um, corresponding angles converse or the converse of corresponding angles. You can put it however you want. It's normally converse of corresponding angles. Says that if you know that the angles are corresponding, then you know that the lines are parallel. So in other words, if I know that one is congruent to five, because those are corresponding angles, right? They're on the same side and they skip over four. So if I know that angle one is congruent to angle five, then I know that these two lines, L and M, are parallel. L would be parallel to M. Um, so those are the corresponding. I'm going to use different colors for each one. Alternate interior angles, or the converse of alternate interior angles, says if you know that alternate interior angles are congruent. So if you know that angle four is congruent with angle six, then you would know that L is parallel to M. Alternate exterior angles are the converse of the al alternate exterior angle. It says that if you know that two and eight are congruent, remember that just means that they're the same. So angle two, is congruent to angle 8, then you know that the lines are parallel. And lastly, consecutive interior. I don't know why that nobody ever does consecutive exterior, but consecutive interior, so let's say 3 and 6. So if we know, not that they're congruent, because remember consecutive interior are not congruent, but if we know that angle 2 and angle 6 are supplementary. Remember, that's the same thing as equaling 180. Then L is parallel to M. So if we know that 3 and... It's 3 and 6, not 2 and 6. I apologize. 3 and 6. 3 and 6 are supplementary, then they are parallel. Okay. Okay. So if we need to practice this, first of all, we're looking at 2 and 4. So here's 2, here's 4. The way that you know which parallel lines you're looking at is 2 has this line and this line. Actually, here I'll highlight the lines that, they, that touches it. 2 it consists of this line and this one. That's what makes angle 2. Angle 4 is made out of this line and this line. Okay, the line that overlaps, that they both include, this one, is the transversal. And then the lines that don't overlap, so in other words, these two here, are going to be the ones that are parallel. So if 2 and 4 are congruent, then we know that C is parallel to D. And we know that because they are on the same side of the transversal and they skip over. So that is called a corresponding angle or the converse of corresponding angles. Yes, we abbreviate everything in geometry. 5 and 10. Here's 5 and here's 10. So again, let's do the same thing. 5 is made out of this line and this one. That's what makes angle 5. 10 is made out of this one and this one. So again, where they overlap, this is my transversal, which means that these are my parallel lines. So A and 
A is parallel to B. And those angles are on the inside and across from each other. So alternate exterior angles. All right, now we're talking about 6 and 10. Okay, so this one's a little bit harder because they're not... No, it'll be the same thing. 6 is made out of this line and this line. I'm sorry, 10 is made out of those two lines. And then 6 is made out of this one and this one. So where they overlap, this is our transversal. And then these two are my parallel lines. And they are on the same side of each other and on the inside. So they're consecutive interior angles. All right, next we have 1 and 14. So 1 and 14. 14 is made out of this line and this line. 1 is made out of this line and this line. Where they overlap is our transversal, which makes A and B our parallel lines. And they are on the outside and across from each other. So alternate exterior angles. Oh my gosh, I messed up on 5 and 10. 5 and 10 are on the inside. They aren't exterior, they're interior. I apologize for that. Okay, 14 and 15, 14 and 15. All right, 14 is made out of this line and this one. 15 is made out of this line and this one. So again, this one's my transversal, which makes these two my parallel lines. And 14 and 15 are on the same side on the inside, so they are consecutive interior angles. Next are 11 and 16. <laughs> All right, 11 and 16 are different. They are not a special angle pair. They are vertical. But none of the things we learned today prove that lines are parallel from vertical angles. So we can't prove that they're parallel. That doesn't work. All right, 4 and 15. Here's 15. Here's 4. And 4 is made out of this line and this line. 15 is made out of this line and this line. Where they overlap is always the transversal, which means that A and B are my parallel lines. And 4 and 15 are on the outside and across, so alternate exterior angles. Ten and twelve. Ten and twelve. 10 is made out of this line and this line. 12 is made out of this line and this line. Where they overlap is the transversal. And these two are the parallel, so C and D. All right, so one is on the inside and one is on the outside. And it skips, so their same side skip, which makes them corresponding angles. All right, 9 and 13. Those are a linear pair. They don't have, um, they don't prove parallel lines. They weren't part of these. So they are a linear pair. But they do not prove parallel at all. Now you've got 2 and 7. 2 and 7. 2 is made up of this line and this line. 7 is made up of this line and this line. 
this is where they overlap, so that's the transversal. These are my parallel, which are C and D. All right, then two and seven. Oops, I erased seven. Two and seven are on the inside and across from each other, so alternate interior angles. And then six and 11. So here's six, here's 11. Six is made up of this line and this line. 11 is made up of this line and this line. Because neither of them overlap, there's no transversal, which means that they don't relate to each other at all, which means they do not prove that they are parallel. So this one is nothing because we can't prove that. And that's the end of your notes.